Hello everyone, welcome back once again. In this video, we will look at getting started with Service Fabric Applications inside the Visual Studio 2019. But before we get started, please make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't. So let's get to it then. So what is really a Service fab Fabric Application or Azure Service Fabric Application? So Azure Service Fabric application is a distributed systems platform that makes it easy to package, deploy and manage, and manage scalable and reliable microservices and containers. Service Fabric also addresses the significant challenges in developing and managing cloud native applications. So a key differentiator of Service Fabric is its strong focus on building stateful services. You can use the service fabric pro programming model or run containerized stateful services written in any language or code. You can create a service fabric cluster anywhere, including Windows Server, Linux on-premises and other public clouds in addition to Azure. So to be able to start this, we've got to make sure that we've got the necessary um, packages or dependencies installed. So we've got, we have to go to the tools and get tools and features. So as you can see, once, once we get the tools and features, we get the Visual Studio installer opened. So here we've got to make sure that we've got Azure development checked, downloaded and installed. So this Azure SDK tools and project for developing cloud applications and creating resources using .NET Core and .NET Framework. So let's get to it then. So once you actually, we've got this bit sorted out, then we can come back inside the Visual Studio. So here, what we do is, is we come in, we obviously we create a new project. So we come far new, or start window and create a new project. So here, if we've actually downloaded and installed the Azure development, then we can select the Azure here. So once we select that, we should have a service fabric application pops up here. So once we click on this bit here, then we can go next. Then here we can configure our project in terms of the project name, the solution and the solution location. And we can also select the .NET framework version that we would actually want to use. In this case, we're just going to leave it as the 472. So we click on the create here. So as you can see here, we've got this new dialog, which is a create a new service fab fabric service um, dialog. So here we can select what actually type of service fabric that we want to, or service fabric application that we want to create. So we're just going to have a quick look at what we have, the types of application we have. But on the next upcoming videos, we will actually tackle them separately, individually as well. So we've got um, a .NET Core application and it, it can actually expand to a stateless service application, which is, a build, which is to build a native core, .NET Core stateless service. So we've got a stateful service, which is to build a stateful .NET Core service with persistent internal state using the reliable collection framework, which we will also have a look at in, in, in one of my upcoming videos. So we can also build an actor service applications, which is to build a, a .NET Core service using a virtual actor pattern, which we also look at on upcoming videos. So obviously we can also build a stateless ASP.NET Core which is an ASP.NET Core stateless service. So, so as you can see, they're just popping up here. So we can also build a hosted containers and application as a guest executable. So this will actually run a self-contained application such as a Node Java or a native application in your service fab fabric cluster. So as you can see, we have got like, a couple of other applications that we can build but we're not going to look too much into that but we what we're going to do is just going to select one of these 
first two applications, we're going to have a look at the stateless service application. But before we go on and create it, I'm just going to make a bit um, a little notice here. So the ser service fabric powers many Microsoft services today, including the Azure SQL database, the Azure Cosmos DB, Cortana, Microsoft Power BI, Microsoft Intune, Azure Events, Azure Hubs, Azure IoT Hub, Dynamic 365, Skype for Businesses, and many core cool Azure services. So this is one. This is mostly the base application level to build most of the Azure cloud applications. So let's get to it then. So we're just gonna click on the create. So I'm just gonna pause it because it might take a while before the whole thing loads. Okay, let's let's wait. So we've got the whole thing loaded up now. So once we've got the new application created, we get the documentation that comes with it as well. So we're just gonna open a documentation site. So it states that your Azure Service Fabric application has been created. This is at, this article actually describes some tutorials to try out the makeup of your project. But we're not going to look too much into that. So as you can see, I've got two projects created. One is for the stateless part of the application, and the other is for the service um, for the service fabric application, right? So we're just going to look inside what the program that CS in the stateless bit here. So as you can see, I've got the main the main the program main. So this this bit actually the service the XML file defines one or more service type name, registering a service maps or service type name. So we're just going to look at what is actually inside all this project folders and files. So since this is just to get started in this, in this case, we actually look at this application much more into detail. So there's no point actually emphasizing too much on the application. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run it to see what I mean the first service fab fabric service application looks like. So you can click on the F5 on this start button here. So, so you might be prompted to whether you own the service, whether to give it some permissions. So obviously we're going to restart the Visual Studio and open it as an administrator before we can run it. So as you can see, this task requires the application to have an elevated permissions. So we just allow the application to run with elevated permission. So as you can see now, we've got to add me showing I me mean showing here now then we're just gonna rerun it again so now as you can see we've got the whole thing just started and it's working now so as you can see here now, we've got the service started here. So here we can actually look at what is actually happening inside the, the di um, diagnostic events. So here we can actually drill down to see what is actually going on. So as you can see here, we've got all the, the service message in, with all the service details and it's actually been, the, the service, the message is being sent out every second, which is, actually inside uh, the service event source but we're not going to look too much into that but I'm going to leave it here and I hope you've actually gotten started so on the next video we will explore all the projects individually so that we can also drill down to this project so once again if you haven't subscribed to the channel please make sure you do because I've got lots of videos coming up and have a lovely morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are. Peace.